Okay guys, our lesson today is to be able to uh, use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the distance between two points. We have the distance formula, and the distance formula is when we find the difference in our y values to find the vertical change, and we find the difference in our x values to find the horizontal change, and by finding the square root of the sum of those differences, we find the distance between uh, any two points on a coordinate plane. All right. That formula is expressed here, where we see that the distance between any two points is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now what does that mean in English? So, let's take a look at two points on a coordinate plane. All right. We're asked to find the distance between these two points. So let's graph each of these points. The first point we want to graph is 1 comma 5. So from our origin we're going to go over 1, up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're going to put a point. Our second point is located at negative 4 comma negative 2. So once again when we graph our point we start at the origin. We go left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, we go down 2, and we put a point. So we are looking for the length of this segment here. Now, the distance formula essentially says the following. It says if we take this, I want to do that uh, as a straight line, so let me do that as a straight line. If we take this vertical length and we take this horizontal length, we actually have here a right triangle and we know using the Pythagorean theorem we can find the longest side of the right triangle the hypotenuse if we know the length of each of these legs well if I look at the length of this vertical segment we have a length of one two three four five six seven so that length is seven we take a look at our horizontal uh, change here. That has a distance of, oops, let's see, that's a diff distance of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we know that with the Pythagorean theorem, we can find the length of the blue segment by doing the following. Right? We know that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, so we know that 7 squared plus 5 squared is going to be equal to c squared. 7 squared we know is 49. 5 squared we know is 25. So we know c squared is going to be equal to the square root, I'm sorry, c is going to be equal to the square root of 49 and 25. The sum of 49 and 25 and that's going to be what? 60 and 14 it's going to be 74. 74 is equal to c squared. We know according to the Pythagorean theorem to solve for c, we take the square root of both sides and we know that c is going to be approximately, well, the square root of 74. I'll use my calculator for that. All right, I'm going to type in 74. All right, take the square root of that and that's approximately 8.6. All right. Now that's if we're using the Pythagorean theorem, and that's if we have graph paper. Well, the distance formula allows us to do the same thing without the use of graph paper. So how's the distance formula going to work? Well, when we use the distance formula, we want to identify our x1 and our y1, which is our first x value in the first ordered pair, and our first y value in the first ordered pair. And we also want to identify x2 and y2. X2 being the first x value in the second order pair and y2 being the um, the y value in the second order pair. And our distance formula says the following that the distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus 
y2 minus y1 squared. Right? And let's see how that matches the use of the Pythagorean theorem. So d is going to be equal to the square root of the following. Well, what's x2 minus x1? x2 is negative 4, x1 is 1. So we have negative 4 minus 1, and we're going to square that, plus the square root of y2 minus y1. That's going to be negative 2 minus 5. Right? And we're going to square that. So our distance is going to be equal to the square root of, well, what's, let's look at negative 4 minus 1, right? Well, what's negative 4 minus 1, right? That is our change in x values here, right? Here's our negative 4 on the x-axis, right? Here's negative 4 on the x-axis, and here's 1, um, right, 1 on the x-axis, right? And that gives us the length, right, of that green segment. So negative 4 minus 1, right, that's going to be negative 5. Now let me fix that a little bit. I was a little sloppy with that. It's going to be negative 5 squared plus we have y2 minus y1. Well, y2 minus y1 is going to give us the length of that vertical segment, right? The change in y is going to be our length of the vertical segment. Well, negative 2 minus 5, that's going to be negative 7, and we want to square that. So the distance is going to be equal to the square root. Negative 5 squared, we know is 25. Negative 7 squared, we know that that's 49. Right? And we see the same thing happening here because now d is going to be equal to the square root of 25 and 49. And that's our 74. And we can see the same thing here. All right, let me highlight it so we can see that pretty clearly. We have the same thing here and here. Right? The distance is going to be equal to the square root of 74. And, of course, let's finish this. All right, the square root of 74, we know, is approximately, right, use the approximate symbol, 8.6. So we can see how the distance formula uses the Pythagorean theorem. All right? And that's what our goal is today, is to be able to use that distance formula to find the lengths of segments. We're not always going to have a sheet of graph paper. If we have a sheet of graph paper and we can plot the points on the coordinate plane, then of course we can use the Pythagorean theorem like we did to start off with here. But if we don't have graph paper, that's when we use the distance formula identifying x1 and y1 and x2 and y2 and we see that when we use the distance formula we get the same result as if we're using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's try this example. This next example asks us to graph the ordered pairs and if we're asked to graph the ordered pairs we should certainly use graph paper and use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's graph our ordered pairs. Our first ordered pair is going to be located at 3 comma 0. Here's 3 comma 0. Our second ordered pair is going to be located at 7 comma negative 5. So that's going to be what? 2, 4, 6. Here's 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're looking for the length of this segment here. And I like for us to be efficient. So if we have a sheet of graph paper and you're told to graph I'd say use your Pythagorean theorem. So let's find our vertical change and our horizontal change, right? Which is the same as our rise and run, boys and girls. So we have one, two, three, four, right? Vertical change is five. Horizontal change is one, two, three, four, right? So we have found the legs of our right triangle and we're looking for the hypotenuse of our right triangle. The segment that we're asked to find the distance uh, of is the hypotenuse of a right triangle with legs of 4 and 5. So let's go to our Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is going to be equal to c squared. Remember your legs are interchangeable so it doesn't matter which is a and which is b. So we have 4 squared plus 5 squared that's going to be our c squared. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 
it's going to be our c squared. 25 and 16 is what? 25, 35, that is 41. So c squared is equal to 41. To find c, we would have to take the square root of both sides using the Pythagorean theorem. Right? And the square root of 41, we would use a calculator to approximate the square root of 41. So let's type in 41, take the square root, and that's about 6.4. Is approximately the length of our segment C. Approximately. And we use the approximation, approximately symbol there, right? That wiggly, wavy, equal sign. All right? Now, our next example asks us to use the distance formula. So notice we don't have a sheet of graph paper. We have to use that distance formula. So the first thing I recommend when we're using the distance formula is to identify x1 and y1 and your x2 and your y2. That's going to make using the distance formula a bit easier. As you know, anytime we use a formula, we should always begin the problem by writing that formula. So let's write it. Our distance is going to be equal to the square root of x, oops, my bad, distance is, is equal to the square root of x squared, I'm sorry, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, right? The distance is equal to the square root of the sum of the differences, the square of the differences. So d is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1. Well, what's our x2? x2 is negative 3 minus our x1 is 5. We have to square that plus what's our y2? That's negative 2 minus what's our y1? It's negative 4, right? But we have to square that distance is going to be equal to the square root negative 3 minus 5 when we use the additive inverse that's going to be negative 8 but we're squaring that plus negative 2 minus negative 4 when we use the additive inverse it's going to become negative 2 plus 4 so it's going to be 2 and we're going to square that so the distance is going to be equal to the square root of negative 8 squared, that's going to be 64, which is negative 8 times negative 8, plus 2 squared, we know that's 4. Let me wipe that out a bit. And so, scroll down a bit. D is going to be equal to the square root of 68. Now, if we want to approximate that square root, right, we can do that. So D is approximately, when we approximate the square root of 68, it's going to be 68, take the square root of that, that's about 8.2. 8.2, when we approximate the square root. All right? All right. Next example. Notice, we're given a piece of graph paper. If we're given graph paper, I would strongly uh, suggest we use the Pythagorean theorem, but let's graph our points. We have 1 comma 3 over 1 up 3, put a point. We have negative 2 and 4, 2, 4, here's negative 2 and 4. So we're talking about this segment here. All right, here's our rise. Here's our run. Vertical change here is 1. Horizontal change here is 3. So if I'm using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is going to be equal to c squared. So we're going to have 1 squared plus 3 squared. It's going to be equal to c squared. 1 squared is 1. 3 squared is 9. It's going to be c squared. 1 and 9 is 10. The square root of 10 Right? c squared is equal to 10, so when we find the square root of both sides of that equation and find c, right, we can approximate that. Right? Let's uh, approximate the square root of 10. So let's do that. 10 
take the square root of that. That's about 3.2. About 3.2 is going to be our C. All right? And notice we're approximating to the nearest tenth. Right? If you're using a calculator, that's going to be fine. But you could also leave your answer in radical form. If you want to say C is equal to the square root of 10, that's fine. All right? That'll work. All right. Our next example. On a map, each unit represents 45 miles. Hmm, that's interesting. West Point, New York is located at 1.5 comma 2. And Annapolis, Maryland is located at negative 1 comma negative 1.5 and negative 1.5. What's the proximate distance between West Point and Annapolis? Hmm, okay. Well, let's take a look at our ordered pairs. I'm going to recopy them so I have a little bit more space. So we're going to have 1.5. Oops. We're going to have 1.5 comma 2. And we're also going to have negative 1.5, comma, negative 1.5. All right, let's identify them as x1 and y1, and x2 and y2. Let's write our distance formula. All right, it's always good to write that. So our distance is going to be equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1. That's going to be negative 1.5 minus 1.5. Square that plus parentheses. Y2 minus Y1, that's going to be negative 1.5 minus Y1, that's going to be 2. I'm going to square that. D is going to be equal to the square root negative 1.5 minus 1.5. Negative 1.5 minus 1.5, that's going to be negative 3. I'm going to square that plus negative 1.5 minus 2, that's negative 3.5. I'm going to square that. So distance is going to be equal to the square root of negative 3 squared, and we know that that's 9, plus negative 3.5 squared. Let's check that. Clear. 3.0. Clear. Use a calculator for that. 3.5, I'm going to square that, that's going to be 12.25. So our distance is going to be equal to the square root of 9 plus 12.25, that's going to be 21.25. If we want to approximate that square root, it's about 4.6. It's approximately 4.6. However, if we go back to the problem, it says on a map each unit represents 45 miles. So if we want to know the approximate distance between West Point and Annapolis, we have to multiply that right to find the distance now. Right, find the distance on the map where each unit, each of those 4.6 units, represents 45 miles, we have to take the 4.6, multiply that by 45, right, times that by 45, and we get about 207 miles. 207 miles. And I was curious about this problem, so I actually checked that using Siri, of course. And I asked Siri for the approximate distance between West Point and Annapolis, and it is about 207 miles. Let's try it. Hey Siri, what is the different distance between West Point and Annapolis? West Point Island is about 92 miles away by car. All right, that was not the correct answer. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. Hey Siri, 
what is the distance between West Point and Annapolis, Maryland? Annapolis is about 185 miles from West Point Island by car. All right, so 207 miles is pretty close. They were doing West Point Island, which is not quite West Point. All right, so for you guys on your own, you guys are going to try these three problems, all right? And I'll give you guys a second or two to try them, right? I will work them out for you, but if you're working on your own, I'd say stop the tape, try them, and then see if you do the problems correctly, all right? But let's go ahead and do these now after you have began the tape again. We identify x1 and y1. It's supposed to be a y. We identify x2 and y2. We write our formula. Distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Distance is going to be equal to the square root of x2 minus x1, that is going to be 4 minus 0, squared, plus y2 minus y1, it's going to be 5 minus 0, squared, distance is going to be equal to the square root of, what's that, 4 squared, plus 5 squared, distance is equal to the square root of 16 plus 25, try that again, plus 20. So our distance is going to be equal to the square root of 41. And if we want to approximate that square root, our distance is going to be approximately, let's see, 41, take the square root, that's approximately 6.4. 6.4 for our answer. All right, but I'll leave our answer in square root form because that's an exact answer whereas the 6.4 is an approximate answer. All right, let's look at our next one. Let's identify x1, y1. Let's identify x2, y2. We write our formula. Distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Our distance is equal to the square root of, let's see, x2 minus x1, that's going to be 9 minus 7 squared plus y2 minus y1, that's going to be 6 minus negative 3, it's going to be squared, so our distance is going to be equal to the square root of 9 minus 7 is 2, I'm going to square that, plus 6 minus negative 3, I'm going to do the, use the additive inverse, that's going to be 9, right, uh, 9 squared. So the distance is equal to the square root of 4 plus 81. So our distance is equal to the square root of 85. If we want to approximate the square root of 85, we can do that. 85, we approximate that square root. That is about 9.2 for the approximate square root. But the exact answer, we're going to leave our answer as the square root of 85. All right? Okay, our last problem of the day. Let's identify x1, y1, and identify x2 and our y2. We write our formula. Distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Our distance is going to be equal to the square root. Let's see, x2 minus x1, that's going to be negative 5 minus negative 2. Right. We're going to have to square that plus y2 minus y1, that's going to be 1 minus negative 3. All right, and we're going to have to square that. So our distance is going to be equal to the square root of 5 minus negative 2. When we add the opposite, 
that's going to be uh, negative 3 squared plus when we add the opposite here when we add the opposite there that's going to be what 1 plus 3 that's going to be 4 then I square that so our distance is going to be equal to the square root of negative 3 squared it's going to be 9 plus 4 squared that's going to be 16 so our distance is equal to the square root of 25 and we know that 25 is a perfect square number which has an integer value square root square root of 25 we know that that's going to be 5 alright so I hope that that's been helpful and uh, we'll see you next time